hundred years ago. Do you know what the life expectancy was? 62. Yeah, 60. Oh, was really and the average life expectancy was 47. Wow. 47. We literally have added 40 years to the lifespan. All of our institutions. Congratulations. You are a day older than you were yesterday and you're younger than you will be tomorrow. This is a natural course of life. And yet, this aging process can be a difficult topic of conversation. Why else would we have a difficult time freely telling people our age? Why else do we keep things like our birth year private? We are going to look at some of the reasons why this is a difficult subject, some of the repercussions of continuing to deny or hide our own aging, and to suggest reasons and ways to change the conversation. And I'm, Squirrel, yes. I'm the one who chose 100. Yeah. And the reason why I chose 100 is because I think it's kind of neat to be able to look back over time and see all the changes that have occurred. And there is a term that is used to describe the challenge with the conversation, broad, broad spectrum ageism. Absolutely. Ageism is stereotyping and discrimination on the basis of a person's age. There are many myths or false notions that contribute to ageism. In this video, we will explore seven of these. Beginning with the notion that aging is a disease to be avoided or cured. Why is there such fear of aging? Why is there such fear of disability? Because if aging is a disease, then everyone's gonna come down with it and you can make a lot of money selling a cure. Everywhere Americans stand up to $20 billion to so look like they did 20 years ago. But there are secrets to beauty. It is not difficult to find commercials and advertisements that claim we are able to avoid aging, slow down the aging process, and immediately see the results. To the human body, time is a critical factor that is simply unavoidable. Is it then possible that there is an answer we could use to at least slow down the aging process? There is. When AM PM is taken daily, it's like the same process of tuning the body's very intricate fine Swiss watch. Are you tired of under eye bags, puffiness under the eyes, crow's feet? The latest trend in skincare is immediate results. I saw a wonderful clip with Frances McDormand who was being uh, interviewed and she talks about this wrinkle on her face. I think it was this one and she said, my son Pedro put this wrinkle here. It's for every time I shrieked in dismay or smiled with happiness at something that he did. So where does this idea come from that wrinkles are ugly and that they are something we should be ashamed of because they're the map of the experience of our lives? The second myth, old people have nothing to be happy about. How many words do we associate with being old that perpetuate the myth that olders are not happy? Grumpy old men. Witchy old lady feeble, unsteady, vulnerable. But are these really true? My mom's 85 and she says it's the happiest time of her life because it's the freest. She doesn't have all the responsibility. I'm the oldest of seven children. That was a lot of responsibilities. I know most older people in the village that I see, they seem to be happy, content. A lot of younger people, are they happier or sadder? I assumed that older people must be depressed because they were old and they were going to die soon. And one thing I learned was that older people actually enjoy better mental health than the young or middle-aged, which took me by surprise. But another thing that surprised me even more was to learn that the older people are the less afraid of dying. And I had just presumed that the awareness that, you know, the, the gr Grim Reaper is closer and closer to your bedside. Um, you know, with every day and every week must be oppressive, but that's not how it works. The awareness that time is short actually motivates people to spend their time more wisely and more able to live in the moment and to take more pleasure in, in the immediate. And that ability, which children possess because they don't know how to live in anything but the present, and older people possess, is what makes us happy that living in the moment. And that is the underpinning of that U-shaped happiness curve, the finding that people are happiest at the beginnings and the ends of their lives. The research behind the happiness curve comes from the work of Becca Levy at Yale University 
and has been substantiated by researchers in multiple countries and situations since. Dr. Laura Karstensen from Stanford University talks about it as the aging paradox. The older we get, the happier we are. I told someone once, I choose things that make me happy. One of the best classes I ever took was about Jewish comedians, mm -hmm. and all we did was laugh for two solid hours. <laughs> <laughs> the third myth. Old people are not as smart or as productive as young people. It's sad that in many cases, high-tech companies in particular are very fond of younger people because of uh, you know tech skills and, and the like. I think they're starting to come around to realize that older adults that have that yearning to learn can be as quick, but have something else. They've crystallized intelligence. They've seen patterns before, why things work, why they don't. In their head is the memories of why companies did what they did and why it made sense. And in some industries, we're running out of people. That is, many of the young people that are out there available for work don't want to be farmers. They don't want to drive trucks. Many of them do not even want to go into parts of health care. So as a result, we're going to need older workers to stay in the workplace, not just for their good, but to make sure that we don't have lost knowledge when they leave, that we need the skills, and frankly, we need somebody to do the work. If we're going to overcome ageism, a, a huge task before us is to revise our notions of productivity because older people contribute a huge amount to the economy. Uh, many uh, older people spend much more time looking after someone else than younger people. Often someone, you know, someone in their 70s who's looking after a neighbor who's in her 80s or 90s. That is labor that is not being paid for by anyone else and it is labor that enables paid workers to go out and do their jobs and we don't value that. The fourth myth so older adults may be contributing to society, but there is a myth that we will lose our usefulness and be put in nursing homes where everyone is lonely, isolated, and depressed. What would you estimate is the percentage of people over 65 who live in nursing homes? I really don't have any idea. I, I it, estimate yeah. uh, maybe 25 percent? 35 percent. Maybe 10 percent? I'm going to say 40 percent. 25%? I'd probably guess around 30 to 40%. I found that actually only 5% of the population ends up in nursing homes and that was shocking. It eliminated a huge amount of fear that I had of like, okay, I'll, I'll get older and then I'll be broken and then I'll be sleeping in this little room with another roommate and nobody will love me. And it's like, oh, that doesn't happen. Most people don't have to do that. I thought, I don't know what percentage of the population, maybe 30% ended up in nursing homes. In fact, it's 4%, down from 5 in the last decade. And I thought, why don't I know this stuff? Why does this come as such a surprise? And the answer is because we live in a society that drowns out all but the negative about late life. And if you go through life without questioning those assumptions, you will live less well and you will live less long. The fifth myth. One of the effects of ageism, of projecting stereotypes on a group of people based on how another person perceives them, assumes that the group of people are all the same. Nothing is further from the truth when it comes to the aging process. The older we grow, the more different from one another we become. So the more inaccurate, inherently inaccurate any, any guess about a person, how their brain functions, how their body functions, what they're listening to, who they hang out with becomes increasingly more unpredictable over time. Stereotypes are never accurate, but especially when it comes to age. So we are ageist every time we equate a certain way of feeling or thinking or being in the world with our age rather than as a function of who we are. My father was born in 1898 and died in 1992. And he said to me one time, he said, if I'd had the choice, I would not have lived in any other time. Mm -hmm. He says, I went from the horse and buggy to the moon. But I feel that way about my life. And that's what I wish for everybody, that they have that. The sixth myth is that people who age in place, who stay in their own homes, 
live more fulfilled lives than those who must choose to live in a communal setting. Current research points to the issue that loneliness, isolation, and depression are a world health epidemic, which has been exasperated during the COVID-19 pandemic. We all have a better sense of the situation of the isolation that older adults living in their own homes have been experiencing for years. Isolation is a major risk factor for not only depression, but also for suicide. And, and it's a health risk, period. So people get sicker. So companion animals can sometimes help visitors. You know, if, and I know a number of churches have regular visits to people who are unable uh, to, because of transportation problems, they don't drive, or if you have a buddy system where people call. Mm -hmm. you know, so as creative as one can be to try to stop the severe isolation, that is very critical. The antidote to loneliness, isolation, and even depression is to live in the midst of community and with the support of others. Faith communities are one example of organizations and communities that support older adults. The seventh myth, all adults are to be completely independent. From the moment we turn 18, the first legal age of adulthood, there is a belief that we are to be independent. This belief only increases as we age, even as it is defined differently by each one of us. But in our culture, adults are to be on their own. There is no myth in America that we cling to more tenaciously than the idea of independence, that being independent is itself a virtue and a sort of sign that you are a strong and powerful person. In fact, no one is ever independent, not from the day we're born, not as children, not in midlife when we need a thousand people to help, you know, raise our kids from, you know, help us navigate the work world into old age. As we age, we do start to need help with things we were able to do on our own before. But there should be no shame in that because it is the natural order of things. It is no more shameful to ask for help and need help at the end of life than it is at the beginning. And it's really important to realize that what is stigmatized in this culture as a one-way transaction, like you're a beggar, and you should be ashamed to say, you know, could you, could you reach for that thing? Could you help me up these stairs? It's a two-way transaction, and it enriches the person who helps you as much or more than it enriches you. These are some of the negative narratives that are present in our culture. Ashton Applewhite suggests a different way to look at our aging. Age pride. Age pride is for everyone who refuses to regret waking up a day older, who acknowledges long life as the privilege it is, and who is prepared to challenge the power structures that underlie all discrimination. The purpose of life is to love and be loved, and so that means cultivating relationships. And in the process, you, you come across opportunities for service. And, uh, you can always learn, always find something interesting. There's always a backlog, you never run out of things to do. I was hiking with some guys that were in their like late 70s, early 80s, and they could out hike me. And mm -hmm. I was like 30 years younger than they were. These are a few of the myths that influence the conversation about aging around us, but there are many more. Take note of where you see these myths in your own context. Create your own list of additional sources and join the conversation about aging that best supports you in your own aging process. This is not something I'm going to have to give up. And it turned out as people went, went into retirement, it just gave them more time to retrain. Yeah. And so, you know, it was like, wow, this is kind of a, an exciting time to think about.